That's exactly. My paintings will be quite, they're quite realistic when I'm done. Nice. This is acrylic. I'm about to switch to oil and all the details are done in oil. Yeah. Oh, how interesting. Yeah. So I'm about, and I, let me see. No, nope, we're not broadcasting yet. Well, that's all right. No, they like people to talk. It's. <laughs> yeah, they do. Yeah, we do. <laughs> but it hasn't started yet. <laughs> all right. Hello, friends. I'm back. Uh, plain air, painting, by the water, moving on to oils, 736, all that. You got it. All right, let's get to work. I tried to fix my music issues and, and failed. Uh, what color do I want to do here? <laughs> Didn't expect that, did you? Let's zoom in so you can see what's going on here. Okay, for what it's worth, <laughs> when in doubt, for me, um, in the oil glaze, and I'm gonna, yes, I'm gonna do the whole canvas. This is oxide red. And it, it is, whoops, it is my default glaze color. When in doubt, if, when in doubt. Now, I'm, a, I'm about to wipe a bunch of that off and then um, switch to uh, blue, of course. And I think today, unusual, I'm gonna wipe off with paper towels. And then I'm going to glaze, continue glazing with blue, various shades of blue. And forgive me, <laughs> whether you are a beginner or not, or a, what I usually call early journey painter, so it's not to be offensive, um, I always hear in my voice, uh, in my head, I, I always hear, um, I always hear early journey painters uh, arguing with me, so to speak, in, in my mind. And, and uh, in this case, an early journey painter would be, would be saying, why'd you do it all brown? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Forgive me, and I, none, of, none of you would say that, of course, I understand that. But, but a lot of early journey painters would say that. <laughs> um, well, because warm looks good, especially warm on top of cool looks good. And by the same token, cool on top of warm looks good. So I call that crossing the equator from warm to cool to cool to warm in, in glazing. Now the same thing is true with, with uh, uh, scumbling too. It, 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 it's, a, it's a beautiful effects. Beautiful things happen when you, in layers, when you cross from warm to cool and cool to warm. So now I'm in fact going exactly the opposite direction, right? First I had a cool painting and I did warm over the whole thing, then wiped off some, not all of course. And, and now I'm doing cool again on top of the warm. Why? Simply put, because beautiful effects are created when you cross the warm cool equator from the cool realm to the warm realm, from the warm realm to the cool. So there you go, that's just, that's just as bluntly as I've ever put that. <laughs> Why do you do that? Well, because it looks cool. That's the answer to every question. I've, I've learned that since my grandchildren moved in with me. My name is Bigka, Bigka at home. And instead of grandpa, it's Bigka. And uh, 
if they're watching me paint, they're prone to say, Bigka, why did you do that? Why'd you do that? And I've discovered, having little kids in the house, I've discovered that's the same answer every time as an artist. Why'd you do that? And the answer is because I thought it was going to look cool. Okay, so you don't really know for sure if it's going to look cool until you do it. Um, blah, 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 blah. I'm trying to decide if I'm done. Am I finished glazing? I might be. Um, no, let's do some, let's do some blue, blue, whoa, bunch of fish, a school of little hundreds of little tiny fish just jumped out of the water here at my right hand. Um, those of you who missed the earlier broadcast today, I am, hello Jolie, good to have you here. I'm trying to do a painting in two hours. Now, I don't know whether to, <laughs> is it cheating? I spent, I spent way too, whoa, I spent way too much time during the break there trying to get my music playing again and I have, I have three Bluetooth devices on me at any given moment when I'm painting out like this, well, when I'm painting in as well. And they were all getting confused with each other. <laughs> I was getting it wrong. And my microphone was coming out of my music speaker and so on. So anyway, um, so do, can I add 10 minutes to the clock, please? <laughs> I'm asking you for permission. All right, I think I'm going to call that glazing process and call that finished. All right, next, uh, fuzz layer. Let's do some fuzz. Fuzz is translucent color. Not to be confused with transparent or opaque, of course. Translucent. Translucent color, soft edges, and local color. That is realistic color. Okay? So, for the first time here on this painting, I'm going to introduce some, some white, um, white, titanium white paint.
pardon my head in your way there. I know, I'm sorry about that. Can't be helped sometimes. Okay, so translucent, this the, the fuzz layer. Translucent, soft edges, and local color, that is realistic color. So the trees on, on the bank over there, of course, have a greenish cast to them. So this is a good time to do some At moments like this, I'm thinking about many of you early journey painters who are saying, I want to get loose. Which is the right thing to say. I shouldn't say it with that sort of mocking tone. <laughs> I don't mean to. <laughs> but we all say, uh, we're all, we all say that. I say that myself. I want, to, I want to paint looser. But when I'm painting, the way I'm painting right now, I, I, I want to say, okay, just do this. <laughs> Stop talking about it. Stop talking about getting loose. Just do it. Just get loose. Paint loose. Now, go. <laughs> I know it's not quite that, not quite that simple. I, I do really understand that. Ah, I'm mixing up colors and, and failing, doing a bad job of mixing colors. Does that ever happen to you? Then you get, you get too much of the wrong color on your brush. You're having a hard time getting it fixed. That's, that's what I'm doing. Okay, let's do that again. All right, there we go. This is, I'm trying to mix up a dark, dull green to do um, the shady side of this tree. It took me a lot longer to mix the paint than it did to uh, do the painting, didn't it? Forgive me, hang on, I'm, I'm looking. Just a, a little bit more in the fuzz layer. Um, I'll show you the scene that I'm painting. You can see part of it. I know when, if I go like this, you can see, well, not much. You can see a little bit of what I'm painting. But this grass here, of course, is green. It has sun shining on it, so it's fairly bright green. All right, that's a mess, isn't it? That is just one gigantic mess. Don't panic yet. <laughs> I'll let you know when it's time to panic. <laughs> Soon maybe, but not yet. Let me do a little bit of painting with a rag here. Carving out carving out some of the light bits. Not up there in the sky, I'll do that later. And again, when I do things like this, I can hear the voice in my mind, the voice of an early journey painter saying, if you're going to wipe it all off, why, uh, why did you put it on in the first place, right? Okay, you guys all know the answer to that. 
The answer is because I'm not wiping it all off, I'm just wiping some off. Like staining furniture, you put stain on, then you wipe it off, and of course you're not wiping it all off. So anyway, I know I didn't need to say that, but there you go. The squeaky voice in my head. Are we broadcasting good? I think we are. Let me turn up my volume a little bit so I can hear my monitor, make sure it's working. All right, let's zoom in. You can hardly see my painting, can you? All right, what next? Either pencil or um, drawing with brushes. There's some pencil still visible. Yeah, I'm gonna do pencil anyway, so. That's usually the deciding factor. If there's much from my previous pencil, there's much still, still visible, then I, I don't do pencil, but it's right at borderline today. So I am in fact, yes, going to do uh, painted a lot of boats, a lot of sailboats in my day, but still certainly don't consider myself an, an expert <coughs> at drawing sailboats. I, do, I recognize a lot of the elements, a lot of the pieces. It's like, oh yeah, that's right. And a sailboat has this and that and thus and so. a little tiny little boat dinghy um, tied to the back of this uh, lovely sailboat that's what that is right there <laughs> That's right. And it'll even look that much different in three more hours or in another hour and a half. Yeah, pencil was the pencil was the right decision here, the right choice. Forgive my head. I got to paint the edges of the canvas here. If you don't paint the edges of the canvas, then you are obligated to put a frame on your painting. And goodness knows I do not want to be putting 
frames on my painting. Whoops, here's a drawing mistake. Let's quick this, fix this really quickly. I didn't have the, the dock coming over here. That looks much better. There we go. Now, there's, some, there's a woman here doing some gardening when I got here. And I liked the feel of that, so I'm going to do those two women kneeling down, working on flowers here. Just a minute here, and I'll, I'll pick you up again and show you, uh, point you at the the scene that I'm painting here. All right, wide angle. So that's the basic the basic scene that I'm shooting beautifully. Um, I can say this. Okay, I am ready for uh, dark details. And in, in this phase, in this stage of the painting process right here, I want to make sure that I have adequate darks in place. And if I don't do it now, I'll have to cheat, cheat later. And... Uh, and uh, come back and, and do dark slater, which is, I certainly can do, but I don't like to do it. The, the idea is get all of that done right here. What color are tree trunks? Do you know? The grade school, the grade school tradition of tree trunks is that they're brown. But be, you have to be careful of those grade school traditions. Um, and usually, all right. So it's real. An, real there is a, there is a, a an answer. Of course, the, the the real answer is whatever color they are. That's what color they are. In other words. But when if you want to have a, a default starting point for uh, tree trunks, the answer is gray. Way if you start with gray, don't think of them as. Don't think of them as brown, or you'll, you'll have a harder time getting back to realism. Think of them as gray, and then um, brown them, add brown to them as necessary. But very often, because of the moss and lichens, tree trunks are green. They often have a very greenish cast. And of course, they can be any color in the world, depending on the, the light that's hitting them. But anyways, it's, for your, for your, you know, your default setting, make tree trunks gray, and then branch out from there to whatever color uh, seems appropriate. By the same token, at least in in our part of the world, um, what color are these pylons, these posts that are sticking up out of the water? Do you know what color they are? They are green, green, green. They are, that is the default setting. I don't know what it is in the rest of the world. They're green because they've been treated with either salt or formaldehyde. I forget which. Um, so they have a very definite, especially when the sun hits them, very pale green. So that's what you see reflected already. And, uh, Sort of part of the purpose of this uh, this layer of dark details in transparent oil. A little bit of the one of the things it accomplishes anyway is that it helps push back the exaggerated pencil markings.
but it all goes together to make a, a, a beautiful you know, soup of, or stew of textures. Yeah, a little bit of dark here in these, these trees. Right. Now let's do one of my favorite tricks. Hi guys. How you doing? What are you fishing for? Are you fishing right off the dock here? No, we're going out to Shackleford. Oh. And oh, okay. Got it. You in your boat? Or are you? No, we're taking a ferry. Oh, okay. Cool. Nope. Here. Raleigh. Yeah, there's five of us here in town, okay. kind of all week, painting all over the place. How about you? Where are you from? Raleigh. Oh, okay. Gotcha. About three hours from here, huh? Yep. <laughs> Give or take. There's your fish. Yeah. Your bait, anyway, huh? So this is my, my trick for painting water is horizontal mark, tw twisting my brushes, and then and then smear it all, blend it all gently with horizontal strokes. Come back and do a few more, and then the the finish, of course, will be the the light bits in the water. Hey man, hey, how's it going? Did you find anything? Yeah, Did you? <laughs> I like painting water. Sometimes it looks like water. <laughs> That's right. For sure. And then I come back and do light highlights last. The sparkle, that's what really makes it look like water. Oh, fantastic. Well, thank you. Okay. Well, thank you. That'll be fun. Appreciate it, Rusty. Excellent. So we better paint quick because we got to stop at supper time. Yeah, yeah. Y'all let me know about what time y'all want to go. I, to tell you, I bet it'll be about 7 because okay. most of us have been wanting to paint as long as there's daylight, you know? Excellent. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. That'll be fun. Appreciate that. Yeah. That will be. I think they're going to clean off my palette. Well, thank you. That'll be fun, Rusty. I'll look forward to that very much. I'll try to work hard between now and then. <laughs> oh, that's, I appreciate that. That's generous of you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Something. That's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. We all learn from each other. That's the truth. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know the feeling. Yep. 
All right, I'm ready for final edit. According to my calculations, I have half an hour. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Um, final edit, three options. Start with the furthermost object, which is in the landscape, always the sky. That's option number one. Option number two, start at the focal point, which is going to be the back of this boat right here. The focal point's right there, right in the center of the painting, too. And option number three, start with the lightest, brightest, whitest object, which is also the back of the boat. So normally, if, if there's two of those are the same, the focal point and the lightest thing, that's where I start. But today, I think I feel a little too, I don't feel settled. I won't feel like I can put my weight down until I get this, um, this guy uh, nailed down, so to speak. I'm, I'm not comfortable with w the way the sky looks right now. Um, and so that that makes makes it a bit awkward, you know, to proceed with something else. So I'm gonna I'd make this decision off as, I'm gonna often I'm going to paint the thing that irritates me the most, <laughs> which at the moment, as I said, is the sky. Now, to irritate is an overstatement, truly. Let's add a little white to that color and a little tiny bit of orange too. Whoops. Okay. A little more yellow orange and a little bit lighter. I don't have to I don't have to redo, I don't think, what I just did. But I want to uh, And that decision was made largely based on me trying to match what's already here. In, in the final edit layer, I spend a lot of time and energy uh, trying to match mixing, painting like a traditional oil painter, that is to say, mixing colors on my palette. Uh, like, a, like a traditional oil painter. Uh, but in this case, a lot of my mixing is I am, I'm trying to match what's already on the canvas because, uh, because our eyes really do get, our, our eyes get a kick out of subtle subtleties. <laughs> Uh, let me think about this. Let me think about I'm going to make a statement, but I understand that it's half-baked. I haven't thought it through completely, but there's, there's a truth in here somewhere. Let me see if we can ferret it out. Um, do our eyes enjoy stark, strong contrasts? Uh, and I would say, of course, they do. You know, think, think. You know how we paint a children, a child's nursery or playroom. Playroom is better is a better analogy. Think about how we traditionally paint a children's playroom: bright colors, primary colors, intense colors. Thereby, and if it's more than one color, fairly strong contrast. Are you with me? So do our eyes enjoy strong contrast? And absolutely they do. And our, our, um, our eye, like the, the strongest contrast in this painting is going to be right in this area, the, the dark lumber against the light water. It's not there yet. And the, the, light, the lightest part is going to be the back of this boat. So our eyes go there. But there's some, and again, I haven't figured out how to say this, I've, I've made this observation before, inwardly, silently, I think. Not sure that I've ever said it. 
But when it comes to enjoyment, visual enjoyment, our eyes really, really get a kick out of subtlety. That's, I don't know how to fit those two together. I, I almost want to say, I, I want to say our, if it's a choice between the two, stark or subtle, Subtle is more important than stark, but I'm not sure that's really true. Do you understand? Feel free to chime in and help me out here. Uh, there's a relationship, but there's, and and be of those two, of those two, stark contrast um, versus subtle contrast. As an as a painter, the latter, the the subtle is the more important or more challenging or something. Anyway, that's as I said, I'm, I'm half-baked on that. I'm going to I'm gonna have to work through that, think through that for a while and see if I can come up with some accurate, definitive statements, if you will. Um, there's something about... Okay, so, and again, I know you, it's so subtle, I'm not sure you can even see it, but some of this paint is opaque paint on top. Some of it is underpainting, but the colors are so close, that's a good thing. The subtlety tickles our brain. Some person says, do you mean subtle as in a dreamlike feeling? No, no, I'm talking about like, not dreamlike, although it could convey that. No, I mean like two colors next to each other that are almost identical but not quite. That's what I mean by subtle. Okay, I mean literally uh, not subtle in a psychological way, literally subtle in a um, uh, in a physics, in a seeing way. Okay, and what I'm doing, for instance, what I'm doing right now by painting what is are commonly called sky holes, and in this painting, in fact, they are sky holes, but as I call them tree holes because in most of my paintings what's behind the tree is not sky but is a, a bright building or some such thing. Okay so what I'm doing right now is the opposite of what I was talking about a minute ago. I was talking about subtlety. This is not subtle. This is poke you in the eye. <laughs> um, starkness. Okay. Um, now some of you should recognize I should be talking about Right now, I should be talking about punctiliar light. Let me, and as you know, if, if you're a regular, I say the same things over and over and over, not because I, it's a mnemonic, it's a teaching device. It's not because I can't think of a new way to say it, but if I say the same thing over and over, you and I both, <laughs> the teacher and the pupil, we will both remember it better. So here it is, the human eye is inexorably, that means we can't help ourselves, the human eye is inexorably drawn to punctiliar light, okay? Now, punctiliar just means points, points of light. Again, so why don't I just say, why don't I just say then that the human eye is drawn to points of light? Well, two reasons. One is it's not as memorable. <laughs> So sometimes you use big words just because the big word will, in fact, help help it cement it in people's minds. But there's, in this case, there's a much more important reason, and this is classic punctiliar light. But the reason I don't say our eyes are drawn to points of light is because if I say that, then the connotation, the inference is that people, you painters, my pupils, will will say, "Oh, I get it." So we should draw like stars, Christmas lights, candles scattered across the table. Those are, those are all points of light, and indeed they are. But if I say punctiliar light, then you go, what? What's that mean? Well, it's not just the things that make the light, like traffic lights, stars, candles, Christmas lights, decorations in a tree. Those are forms of punctiliar light. But if I say punctiliar, see, that's what, that's what sky holes are. Most of the time, they're points of light. All right, so again, I, 
that's all repeat, repeat, repeat for the, for you regulars. You you can say that with. I hope you do. I hope you say it with me. I hope you. I hope you say. Well, Dan Nelson says that. Not because I want to be. Not because I want to be quoted, famous quoted. It's because I want to be a good teacher and I want to shift the art of the world <laughs> in my own little way. Uh, so you quote me not because I'm big shot at all, because I'm not. But you quote me because it sticks, because it's something you've learned. Well, I heard one time that the human eye is, what was that word? Yeah, that the human eye is inexorably drawn. <laughs> and I'm sorry to all those of you who watch me who English is your second language. I'm really, really messing with you. I know, forgive me. I'm really messing with you because I'm, I'm using words that even English-speaking people don't use very often. My vocabulary is, alas, larger than average, evidently. Um, so uh, that's, I want you to remember that. The human eye is inexorably drawn to punctiliar light. Remember that. Uh, by the way, speaking of something, <laughs> speaking of me teaching, um, it looks like in the near future, I'm going to begin a, an experiment that I invite you to participate in. Um, I've, been, I've been planning on this. I've been mulling this over for years. And it looks like it's finally going to come to fruition uh, where I'm going to do online painters forum or online uh, critique session, and I will be the critiquer, <laughs> okay? Um, what that will entail is, for a small fee yet to be determined, you can email me your painting. I will, you know, you tweak it in Photoshop or whatever, whatever, whatever uh, program you have to make it look as real as possible. I will finish that process. I will also tweak it in Photoshop to try to make what I think the original probably looks like. Anyway, and then I'm going to print out your painting on a piece of canvas. And then online with both live, student, live students present in the studio and you guys online, we're going to critique it together. I will invite, certainly will invite uh, you know, the people in the studio with me to offer critiques. I might open, you know, I might let you people online, probably will, let you make suggestions, but I, I, in a sense, I get the last word, if you know what I mean. Is this is not a communal critique. This is a Dan Nelson critique. And here's the, here's the, main, here's the main thing, that I am going to paint on, your, on the print that I've printed off of your painting. Does that make sense? So I'm literally going to do what I suggest uh, on camera to your painting. And uh, so we'll see. It looks like that's finally going to start happening here. Um, I've got a group of people in North Carolina who are interested in, in such a thing. I'm going to leave that tree for a while. I'm, I'm uh, going too far with it, if you will. I, I, I want to I move around. I want to jump around, come back to it later. Let's now go to, I'm going to go to the focal point. The sky is no longer bothering me. Wow, I'm not, <laughs> just in case you wonder, I don't think I'm going to make my two hour deadline. But let, let's just see what I can do in, ten, in two hours. And uh, again, I, I am going to take that, that 10 minutes that I spent messing with uh, my music. I'm going to steal that back. Okay, so it, According to those calculations, I have uh, 30 more minutes, exactly. <laughs> and some of you are saying, that's cheating. You said two hours. I know. So call, that's, call me a cheater. <laughs> Go for it. Um, all right, let's do...
That was a nice stroke, wasn't it? <laughs> Long and slow and careful. I often say if, if someone watches me paint uh, all the stages of my painting, except for this one, except for the final edit layer, if someone were to watch me paint and miss this step, they would have the completely wrong impression about how I paint. Um, they would say, oh yeah, Dan Nelson, oh yeah, he's that guy that paints like really fast and crazy and loose. Right? Are you with me? Well, that's not true, is it? Look at me. Watch me now. Now I'm still, and look again, look at how I'm holding the brush. I'm not, uh, this is not tongue painting. This is tongue painting. <laughs> okay. This is real painting, and of course it's, it's controlled, quite, quite controlled, but not, not the bad kind of control. I'm still allowing the brush to wiggle and jiggle and make marks uh, sort of independent of my control, if you will. That's part of, that's where most of our pleasant, most of our pleasant marks in, in painting interesting marks, you know, most of those interesting marks come from the, the marks that your brush makes when you're not, when it does things you didn't, you didn't plan on. Did I make that clear? Not very. The essence of good painting is making interesting marks. And yes. I do some tours. I've got a couple, an elder gentleman and a, and a, in a few minutes. Do you mind if we stop? Oh, please do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Understand your ropes from Raleigh. That's right. Exactly. Exactly. Absolutely. Thanks for asking. Absolutely. Please do. <laughs> in fact, sometimes I'm in Raleigh painting downtown a lot, and they're taking tours, people. And a couple weeks, I was standing in the Capitol, and they just walked right past me. So I saw, I saw, I saw, I saw and I said, on your left, you will see one of our local Raleigh artists painting. Raleigh is known for its art community. <laughs> so I'll do my own narration. Well, if, you don't, if you don't do it, I'll do it for you. Um, that's me. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Down there, and I got a picture of, of the back of one of the... Uh, was doing a smaller one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I uh, posted that on my Excellent. Website, Thank you, Rich. I, I would send it to him or whatever. <laughs> okay. Him. Excellent. About four some of his face. Thank you, Rich. Appreciate it. Thank I'll look forward to seeing you again in a minute. <laughs> That's fun. Uh, that was fun. Okay, let's do some. Let's do some. Let's do some palette knife stuff. Gophers like that, you know. Ah, yeah, that's right. Absolutely. Let's do some. Now, even, even here, what I'm doing right now, this, this kind of thing comes up so often. Um, um, early journey painters. See, the, the trees back here are, still need some painting. So conventional painting, conventional thinking would, would dictate that you would uh, paint the trees first and then paint the, for instance, these this stuff that's on the boat, right? That would be, that would be the conventional, traditional thinking. And as you can tell by the way I'm talking, that would be erroneous. At least when it comes to when it comes to good painting, whenever possible. Uh oh, my the boat's starting to turn. Um, whenever possible. 
you should look for excuses for painting things in the reverse, painting things in the negative. Don't, whenever, in, in every part of your painting, you should look for excuses to not paint the thing, but to paint around the thing, painting in the reverse or painting negative. And uh, because I'm painting the, the lines on this boat before I painted the trees, I'm affording myself that opportunity. So in a little while, I will paint around the boat, around the lines, by painting the tree. Does, does that make sense? Um, that's exactly what sky holes are in a, in a tree, what I call tree holes, is you paint the tree first and you paint the sky second because the sky is behind the tree, so you paint opposite. Did you catch that? That's, in good painting, that's what you look for, is any excuse to paint um, opposite of what it actually is. Why? Why? Why do you look for excuse to do that whenever possible? Well, the, the short answer, forgive me, it's going to be rather disappointing, is because it looks cool. <laughs> because it looks cool. Now, I have a longer answer. I'm trying to decide if I have the energy to get into it, the longer answer. I've given it okay, many times. It's Because when you paint the sky on top of the tree, for instance, there's a little element of visual surprise there. The viewer, now the viewer doesn't know what it is that's surprising them. This is not a conscious thing. But the viewer is sort of surprised to see sky paint on top of tree paint. Because the viewer knows, of course, every human being knows that the sky is further away than the tree. So if you reverse that and make the sky paint closer than the tree, there's a little split second of confusion, and that confusion, believe it or not, is experienced as pleasure, as aesthetic pleasure. And again, this is related very much. It's a good example of what I say so often. You know, the first half of art journey is learning how to paint stuff that looks like stuff. So if you're in the first half of your art journey, you're learning how to paint stuff that looks real. In which case you paint the sky, then you paint the tree on top of the sky because the tree is on top of the sky. The second half of the art journey, we are painting things. We learn, we learn to paint things that look like paint. And I know that's kind of a, you know, cute turn of a phrase, but it's really surprisingly accurate. In the second half of our art journey, we're no longer focused on painting stuff that looks like stuff. We're painting, we're focused on painting stuff that looks like paint. In other words, all the abstract elements of design. The brush strokes are far more important in the second half of your art journey. The brush strokes, the marks themselves, including all the abstract uh, composition marks, texture, line, value, design, composition, all of those are more important than the picture. The picture is still important. As you can see, I mean, everybody can tell that's a boat, those are trees, that's a tree, that's a dock, that's grass. And without apology, I, you know, you can tell that I'm a realistic painter. But you can also tell, especially if you are a, an artist who is in your first half of your art journey where you're learning to paint stuff that looks like stuff, then much of what I do, much of what I do as an artist is deeply confusing to you because you're wondering, well, why don't you just blank? You know, why don't you just paint it so it looks real? And there you go. The answer is because real is a secondary concern to me. I'm much, much more concerned um, about painting stuff that looks good, <laughs> to be kind of funny. And good and real are not the same thing. All right, I could talk about that for hours. I will not do so today. Sometimes I get just tired of saying the same thing over and over. But if you want to hear more of that, just continue to watch my videos. I will come back to it again and again and again. I see you guys chatting. I'm in a hurry. I don't have time to read your chats <laughs> till it's all done. I'm trying to see how much can I do in a two-hour period. Dang, I only have 20 minutes left. Time does fly when you're having fun. 
I am having fun except for the fact that <laughs> I'm not going to get anywhere near finished. So there's my answer to the question. Looks like the answer is coming up great big fat. No. <laughs> the question is, can I do a painting in two hours? And evidently, not, not the way I paint nowadays. Evidently, I can't. So it's mildly disappointing. But of course, the, the real answer is if I had, if I, I have to change my, my style more uh, significantly. You know, so there's, there's the lesson. And of course, you, we all know I'm not going to, what's the word, I'm not going to sacrifice the quality of this painting on the, on a, on a, on the whim. <laughs> you and I both know I'm going to continue to work on it past the two hour point. But I am curious to see what I can do actually in just two hours. And part, part of the reason for that is uh, very often if you go to a, a plein air competition, um, they'll have a what is commonly called a quick draw um, competition and the time limit is typically two hours. So I was curious to see what can I, I still am curious to see, what can I do in, in just two hours? I suspect that most, the great majority of people doing that quick draw thing, for what it's worth, they are doing paintings uh, considerably smaller than this, eight by 10 inches and so forth. Hello, thank you, thank you. I've been watching you over there. Oh, have you? Oh, good. Good morning. Good, good. And it's, yeah, it started with a great big mess, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he thought, what's that guy doing? I guess he's one of them modern artists, right? No, that's true. Thank you. Thank you. See this, honey? That boat's turned around. Yes, 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 because the, 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 the current changes and it turns around and I'm screwed. I took a picture so I can. Oh, good. It took me, uh, yeah. Yeah, that one. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, not only did it change direction, it changed, yeah, some bait jumping up out of the water there. Which one is that? The big, the big yeah, hundred and ten footer. Crazy, huh? Yeah. So are they going south for the winter? Is that normally uh, what they're doing here this time of year? Do you know? Yes. So um, this is a large stop thing point. For yeah. People yeah. Because we're a south facing inlet, so people going up north or down south, uh -huh. they stop here and. Well, the other I said it's safe. New <laughs> really? New Zealand? Mm -hmm. That's a little ways from here. Like That's Panama just Canal. The side of the world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would think Panama Canal. I grew up in Michigan and in northern Michigan, Petoskey. It's a town very much like this. And and we and you see the same boats. I mean, you know, same boats with the same, and so, I mean, so that means all the way up the the East Sea Coast, and then the St. Lawrence Seaway to the Great Lakes. That to me sounds like a really fun sail. Well, that big blue one. Yes, and that huge. No, it's an unusual shape, isn't it? Oh yeah, most of these have the the big ones have their own crew. If you're rich enough to own a boat like that, you you're rich enough to pay somebody. Oh yeah, well, most of these are yachts, but wouldn't you say? Strange yeah. Thing. The blue one? Yes, it is. It's a squat. It's an unusual shape, isn't it? But it looks like. We're landlubbers. Can you tell? 
<laughs> we're not sailors, right? Yeah, we got, we got a little Carolina's gift. <laughs> they are beautiful, though, aren't they? Wow. Thank you. No, it's not actually. I'm, I'm, I've pulled out of all galleries. I've been in many, and at the moment, I'm not in any. So I'm selling online or selling on the street. <laughs> yep. Thank you. Are those real oils? Yes. Although my, oh yes, my painting is acrylic underneath and oil on top. Okay. Yeah, but just a little bit, a little bit uh, unconventional, a little bit, not extraordinary, but a little bit unusual. Thank you. Where are you from? Uh, well, we lived in Franklin, North Carolina for about a year and a half, <gasps> which is the other side of the Yes, of the my son-in-law lives. I've been there many times. Been up the Highlands to paint. Wow. Wow. Oh, yeah, yeah. In fact, that's the connection. Highland, Franklin and Florida. There's, there's more tourists from, <laughs> from Florida than there are from North Carolina, I think. Not tourists, but, you know. Yeah, exactly. And so is that that's where you have lived? That's where you live right now, Franklin. That's where we live now. Is it? Oh. Well, I am. I am. Yeah, I am envious. It's I. It's a beautiful. I love that area, and I've painted in. Where No, no, Franklin. I've painted in Highlands several times. What well, used to be in a gallery on the main straight drag there in Highlands. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead here since I've only got 10 minutes left to paint. I'm going to whack in some of the thank you. Thanks for talking. I'm going to knock in some of the sort of basic colors, shapes, like the green, a little bit of the water. Um, since I've got green on my brushes, let's do some grass down here real quick. This is a, as you can see, a cheap hardware store, you know, plastic uh, spackling knife. And, and uh, I just happen to have it in my, in the easel I'm using today. And I just kind of like it. I would like it in my regular easel, but I don't have it. switch to a real palette knife to do just a, a few more defined up such a small brush a while ago it became irritating you after. Talking to yourself. yes yes indeed <laughs> indeed yes sir <laughs> I am I'm schizophrenic I just put that stuff there to cover up it works <laughs> Thank you. Thank I you. I presume you sell them here. I do. Well, I sell them somewhere. Not in. I'm not in any galleries around here. But I, I have been. I used to be in a couple galleries in this part of the state. Thank you. Really is. There was an art gallery in Morehead that had a painting that my husband kept looking at and looking at. Uh huh. Which gallery was it? Do you remember? Was it Arts and Things? Yeah, maybe it's right there by where... Captain Bills. No, Captain yeah, well, Bills you, is closed. It used to be Captain yeah. Bills. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. So anyhow, he kept eyeing that painting. So one day we're driving down here, going down to the uh, store that go 
Uh huh. And you see that little pot, little Oh yeah, right down here. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna paint that tomorrow. Huh? I'm tomorrow? gonna paint that tomorrow. Yeah. Really? You bet. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. <laughs> so where do you sell your paintings? Well, oh. right now I'm I've pulled out of all galleries, oh. so I'm just doing it online mm -hmm. and online and on the street. So make an offer. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you don't have a card or anything, do you? <laughs> you know what? Yes I do. Hang on. Uh, um they're right there in my van okay. and I should have a hundred right here and I don't. So if okay. you don't mind, sure. I thanks for making me straighten up and go get go get cards. Run, 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 run. Okay, can I add these three minutes to my, oh, less than my, the key in the ignition, that's unusual. Oh my goodness, where's my cards? There we go. <laughs> there, that lady made me do what I should have had all along. I'm such a businessman. Not. I... Here, go. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And where are you? Do you live here? Or are you visiting? Oh, okay. Nice short drive. By the time we get to Havelock, we feel like we're almost there. Where are you from? Raleigh. Oh, how fun. Good. Thank you, you too. Um, all right, again, back to, uh, I need to slap in really quickly. This is me slapping. Slap in the, uh, the bits of color that are really germane to the, to the scene here. Excuse me. <laughs> Yesterday, I'm glad I wasn't broadcasting. I was painting on the porch back at the house. Well, that brush is just shot, isn't it? And man, I got hiccup so bad. <laughs> I was so glad I wasn't broadcasting. <laughs> that would have been awful. flesh tone on these women. And by the way, when, <laughs> just for what it's worth, when I say flesh tone, generally speaking, I am being um, racially sensitive. As I start typically with a, a dark flesh tone, partly so that it's you can't tell what race they are. That's the, the easiest <laughs> solution. But uh, I'm also, of course, practicing the my trick, which is you put down a color, then you put down a lighter color on top of it. And depending how light the second layer is, sort of determines to some degree the the, the race of the person that you're portraying and again most of the time I, I tend toward dark complexion simply because I'd rather have <laughs> I'd rather have the racial uh, makeup of my paintings of a, a vague <laughs> sheesh please understand and again forgive me I know this, this may be politically incorrect but all such all such hypersensitivity to race that is in and of itself racism. Okay, now the, the progressives don't, they like to think no hypersensitivity to racial issues is not racist, but that's because they are very immature uh, in a psychic, invisible, spiritual way. 
and they're not realizing that, in fact, by behaving in a hypersensitive way about race, they are actually being immature in the races. Boy, that was rough. And if you disagree with me, go right ahead, call me whatever ignorant word you want to call me. <laughs> there are some of us who have been on the front edge of racial issues for decades and uh, the progressives are, anyway, never mind, never mind, never mind. I usually don't get political. And I, but anyway, but it is spiritual there. I'm not being political, I'm being spiritual. And, and, and uh, people who are accustomed to dealing with invisible realities, such as racism and race and prejudice and history and so on and so forth, we are more accustomed actually to dealing, like I say, with, with invisible realities, which is what you're dealing with when you're talking about race. Anyway, that's again, I don't usually get even that political, but there you go. But I will say that the hypersensitivity to making sure you're, the hypersensitivity is in and of itself actually a manifestation of a racist immaturity. But alas, it's part of the world we live in, so it's like you have to do it to some degree. You have to be aware. <laughs> oh boy, I can't wait to see the comments on that one. It looks like the very last thing I'm going to have time to do uh, in, within my two-hour time limit is uh, just some the just water. So at this point, everything else will remain as it is. I, of course, I will finish the painting. My two-hour test was just a test. But and again, I've got about 10 minutes, and I think pretty much the most important thing I can do with this last 10 minutes is what I'm doing right now, which is the reflection in the water. So this is grass growing right up out of the water. So whatever kind of grass it is, that you know, marshy grass, the kind of grass you see in the marshes that survives in brackish, salty water. Um, the, the, the grass, of course, affords the painter an opportunity to create punctiliar light. Okay, back to that subject again. And I say that in particular because I, I, I honestly can't tell you how many paintings I've seen in, in, in North Carolina on um, this marsh, marsh grass. Here, let me, let me point you at it for a minute. There, see, see what I'm... Looking at it. now, the boats have all turned around because the tide has turned, so it doesn't look like that anymore. Uh, but I've I've seen so many paintings uh, with you know, marsh grass, and I can't tell you how many of those. Most of those paintings, sadly, have completely, if you will, they've missed the point, the beauty. What is it that attracts our eyes when we look at that grass. It is, in fact, the poinky-doinky light. <laughs> there. Do you like poinky-doinky better than, <laughs> better than uh, punctilier? Poinky-doinky light. It's the dots of light. That is, that is what is attracting us, among other things, but that is one of the main visual things 
that's attracting us to that view. And uh, that has to be rendered by doing the light last. So you put down the dark, like the grass is dark, the water is light. So you put down the grass first and the, the water, the light watercolor, the color that is the water, you put that down last. Does that make sense? Okay, so here's a loaded question. Yes, sir. How come you don't paint the scene when there's no sailboats out there? When, the, when your sailboat's out? no sailboats out Oh, <laughs> that's right, because it's not as beautiful, not that's as interesting. Right. But the town right across the street ran everybody off. <laughs> I had mine out here for five years. Did you really? Yeah. I heard that just... what they changed something. Somebody told me, yeah. what, what's the deal? Because what did they do? For 30 years, well, yeah. forever, for 200 years. You could park, you could park out there. They did not enforce the laws that were on the books. They had vessels out there that were unregistered. They had vessels that were insured. <laughs> I did all that. And they still ran us off. No kidding. And what was? Every gift shop in town sells pictures of the one that waterfront with boats out there. Is not this. <laughs> if they get pictures of the buildings and the boats, everybody buys the boats. Right? That's correct, of course. <laughs> My wife keeps telling me, Dan, people like water. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Paint the water, don't? Because <laughs> I like painting buildings, but yeah. no water. Well, and there's certain. You're exactly correct. Yeah, certain things. Oh my! So you are you live here? Yes, I drive the ferries. Oh, do you? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so tell, why did they start? Why did they decide to suddenly start? Because three grumpy old people here that have expensive houses said that it was an eyesore, and then the uh, Carrot Island people said that they're destroying the ecology. Oh, that the, the, the was it the boats would in a storm wash up on Carrot Island? Was that one of the complaints? Once every five years. Yeah, exactly. A hurricane. Right. And, and yeah, hurricanes about, coming. You have time to get your boat out friend, of the water. A friend from <laughs> Newbury and I. Yeah. Got together. And got, he got press, and he did most of it, and, and got the uh, towing companies to come haul a couple of them off the island, raised one that was sunk out there, <laughs> and it cost nobody anything, and it was good press. Yeah. And the town didn't even learn from that example. <laughs> they just said, oh, no, we're going to legislate this thing forever. Oh, no, because they can. Yep. Oh, darn. Yes, I'd like more boats out there, right? Yeah. For a slip? Yeah. How much a month? Five hundred a month? Twelve dollars and fifty cents. <laughs> that's that's not too cheap. No, and it's that's, it's that's, like being in an apartment over there. That's the right. That's we right. We live in Morehead City. We pay county taxes, all that and everything, and we love to come over here and just go out on the boat. Yeah. In the evening, and dolphins around the boat. Yeah. Yeah. Horses on the island. Yeah. Look at the waterfront. You know, we got music on tour. Oh, that's. It was absolutely beautiful. <laughs> In a marina, it's just like being in an apartment. Yeah, you yeah. Out on your deck. Right, right. <laughs> so that's what they're doing to me. Oh, no. If I had to um, ask the question. That's right. That's, that's right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Yeah, we got, we got, I uh, can't remember, one of our, there's five of us here painting this week. Oh, wow. And w one of us, oh, one of us got, got some, some of that news of that development. Yeah, after 200 years, right? Yeah. So now you can, if you're transient, you can anchor here for 10 days at a time, then you got to be gone 20. So it's not practical for anybody to just keep moving it around. Yeah, yeah. You don't have a solid anchorage. Wow. Bummer. <laughs> it's good, good to get some, gotta get some of the local scuttlebutt, though. Where are you from? Raleigh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Not too far from and I, No. I've painted Beaufort many times. Yeah. It's a picturesque classic. It is, yeah. yeah. And, and that's what they want to do is keep the quaintness of it. But yes, of course. That's, part of, it. that's I, of course that's part of it. Things. What do we come down here to see? Boats. Don't forget to put a little dolphin. Yeah. <laughs> haven't haven't seen any. Yeah, that's right. Or a horse on the island. I know, I know. You see them, truly. Rarely are you disappointed if you come to Beaufort to see the yeah. see the ponies. You see them. Yep. That's... Oh, did you really? Yeah. No kidding. Where? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Well, that's why you can't paint. You did. That's right. <laughs>
and, and how long have you lived here in Beaufort? Then? Five years. I was in Charlotte for two okay. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, I know the I know the drill. I mean, it's kind of fascinating when you run to a run into a real native here. Yeah. Somebody who's been here for a generation or two. That, Go to that's, Harker's Island, you'll find them. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, several years ago we went down. In fact, normally this, the guys that are here, we, we uh, actually, the first year we got together, we, we went down east. And I was looking everywhere. I said, I don't want to find one of these people, that, hoi toiters, you don't know. If, yeah. And I talked to an old guy. He sounded completely normal. Then I ran into a 15 year old kid. Yeah, you couldn't understand a word. <laughs> no, it was like, oh, I just, I kept asking him questions. I just wanted to hear him talk. We got one of our captains over there to like, Go over near there, turn on their station, and listen to them. <laughs> Isn't that something? I turn it way up, and I said, I cannot understand what he's saying. <laughs> that is just fascinating. That you know, that little they're so isolated. It's supposedly an island off the coast of Scotland too. I mean, Scottish accents are tough enough. But there's yeah. one out there that was isolated. Orkney Islands, maybe. Yeah. Is one of them that uh, has been isolated for so long. And it's the same kind of deal. Yeah, they just. Isn't that interesting? I think it's just that they don't even listen to each other. It doesn't matter what they're saying. <laughs> 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 That's funny. <laughs> you know, when we leave, they talk, go back to talking normal. They're just doing it for us. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> hey, anyway, well, quick, here they come. Here they come. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's a fascinating little bit of North Carolina for sure. So you weren't originally from Charlotte either. Where are you from originally? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I grew up in Michigan mostly. Yeah, been in Raleigh 30 years. Tired the shovel. No, no complaint. <laughs> that's right. You know, I still miss snow, but. I don't miss it in September and October and November. To me, it's that March. April. <laughs> oh, that's that, that's the worst. Absolutely, no, that's that's the worst. Is March, April, and May. We lived in Minnesota, my wife and I, oh, boy. and I remember April fifteenth, income tax day. We got eighteen inches of snow. Oh, double whammy. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> It'd make a bad day worse. <laughs> I shovel something now, it's a little colored bucket, and I start and stop when I want it. <laughs> ah, that's right. <laughs> well, I've got a new snowboard. Power, <laughs> power right. driven, it's got heated handles. I said, you go. <laughs> you go, man. Run. That's funny. Yeah, I think, I wonder if I, I left up north when I was maybe young enough, you know, well, I, well, I still liked it, maybe. Yeah. Well, that, I did too. Did you? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I loved it as a kid. I was yeah. all winter. Yeah, exactly. The whole, the whole time. And, and I, I loved winters. I love cross country skiing. But you can't do much of that in North Carolina. Having to go to work in it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's kind of lost its shine. Yeah, I agree. That's the best. Oh, and and I mean, I still remember literally terrifying. You know, driving sometimes. When you, 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 the only way you can tell if you're on the road is you're judging by the tops of those trees and the tops of those trees, yeah, and you think you're in the middle. Yeah. You hope you're in the middle. Yeah, that 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 was not fun. That terrifying. Of course, as kids, spinning out, we do that on purpose well, I for fun. On a That's exactly lap. exactly. Took me out there and said, "Go as fast as you can." Okay, hit the brakes. Exactly. Exactly. That's what that's what Yankee boys do. And you learn real quick. He says, go as fast as you can. Okay, Dad. You hit the throttle and nothing happens. You just spin. <laughs> That's right. You got to start slow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but all these Southerners exactly. don't know exactly. when we get the occasional ice. Oh, man. They're <laughs> dangerous. <laughs> so you do what? You drive the ferry? Or do you own the ferry? Is the ferry yours? Yeah. The 41 foot sailboat that my wife and I did charters on. Oh, do you really? For nine years and Whoa. Now. Oh, okay. We're not going to cruise. She's got a back issue that precludes us from going Aww. for a long time. Yeah. You know, we still would go over to overnight to Cape Lookout. It's beautiful. But yeah. We're just not using that now. But yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's a classic cruiser. It's got to really? go. Really? got to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can't sit here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah.
I will never own a boat. That's just fine. We never didn't get the bug, evidently. It's like it's a disease. It is. <laughs> that's right. Disease. That's right. It's, I'm well, glad to, glad to ride on other people's boats. Well, don't, that's don't want. Lesson I've learned the hard way too. Swimming pool and a boat. The best kind to have is somebody else's. <laughs> that's right. We have a swimming pool. Yeah. You're exactly correct. <laughs> we do have a swimming pool, and uh, yeah, mixed blessing. <laughs> watching you at thank you at work. good Beautiful. thank you thank day. you thank you you too thanks for stopping by all right so I'm I'm definitely at two hours so there we go friends I think what I'm going to do I'm gonna I'm gonna be a little bit f fair to my challenge here and I'm gonna stop I'm gonna pack up I'm gonna go back to the back to the cottage and uh, I'll fiddle on this later. Actually, what I'll tell you what I'm actually going to do at night. I'm going to tell you what I'm actually. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you lies. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm being silly. Um, I will um, let this dry. I'm looking for a pencil. I will let this dry, and um, and tomorrow or the next day, one or the other. Um, I will glaze it, actually. The next thing I do to this painting will be a glaze and, and then go from there. So there we go, two hours, so-so. It, it can be rescued, I think, but it's just so-so. All right, now, timer's off. <laughs> so let's see if there's any questions here I need to answer. Um, <laughs> good morning from Las Vegas, Chris Laval. I think you're new, aren't you? And good morning from Ontario. Hi, Ken. I was born in Hamilton, Ontario. That's a good idea, Uncle. Do we put the paintings out? Now, every year before this, we have done that. We've had a sale, in fact, a pop-up sale in Ocracoke. Um, but that's because we have history and people know us and so on. And this year, our week is one day short. We have to pack up on Thursday. So I don't know if we're, we're going to do that or not. I suspect probably not. But normally we do have a show at the end of the day. <laughs> How much coffee do I drink in a day? <laughs> that's so funny. I had two cups this morning. Do I act like it? That must be what you're suggesting. <laughs> I really not not big cups, two small cups. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uncle, wonder if I can set up a donation based on LLC nonprofit condition. That's a good thought. I actually do have a 501c3, an arts arts one. Uh, I'll think about it. <laughs> Hi, Marlene. Uh, good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Marlene from Arizona. A fun. Thank you. Always good to hear from you. Good. Glad you glad you think that's a good idea. The online critique. Ah, <laughs> but I know I have seen that too. I think it's kind of tacky. Uncle Sixty actually uh, asking if I ever put real sand in the, you know, in the sandy part of the painting. I have seen that done. No, I've never done that. I've had sand in my painting. That's because a big wind came up and you know, blue sand in it. That, that's as close as I've got to that. Ah, some person says, who are my favorite landscape painters? Richard Schmid, T. Bornegi, uh, John F. Carlson, old dead guy, uh, Edgar Payne, California, whoa, 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 California's plain air, father of, father of California plain air, uh, Edgar Payne. Yeah, that's a good list, isn't it? You could do a video on how to handle people while plein air painting. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I handle them nicely, sometimes not so nicely. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, Miguel, <laughs> getting back to our political, slightly political conversation. Hysterical, that's a good word, I agree. Hello, Alex, thank you, appreciate that compliment. 
Yeah, uncle. That's I've heard that. Best day and worst day of your life. No, no. Best day when you buy a, two best days. It's the day you buy the boat and the, bay, the, you, the day you sell the boat. That's why. All right. Goodbye to all. Fun to have you here. Oh, Benji, I am in. I am in uh, Beaufort, right next to Moorhead City. A ferry ride from Oriental, which is a tiny little town that only boating people go to. That's almost true. All right, but I'm going to stop there. Thanks for watching. A little over two hours. And as I said, I'll, I'll do a glaze this maybe tomorrow and work on it some more. Thanks. Bye-bye.